Hi, guys. Welcome back to Girl on Girl. I'm your host, P. And <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, you just saw a little appearance from my cat, Besso, who's the cutest little guy. If you're not watching on video, just picture me trying to do my intro and the cutest little black cat just popping his little head in the frame. <laughs> Actually, it makes me very happy if Besso just stays with me during this recording. I always keep the door open for the cats to come in and just like chill because they're so healing and so cute. So Besso, please stay. Just just come hang out for a little bit. Um, anyway, if you're new here, this is a podcast where I basically have just super vulnerable chats in my bedroom so we can talk about all things queer or just all things related to mental health. Doesn't matter what the topic is. I feel like I just love to get deep and vulnerable. And what better way to do that by just having like an, a podcast where you can kind of vent everything out. And I hope, as always, I say this, queer representation really, really matters. And that is why I started this podcast in the first place. I don't think there's enough femme lesbian representation. And I especially don't think there's enough femme Indian representation when it comes to being gay or a lesbian. So I love to be that voice. And I hope you guys really resonate with this. Today was definitely a very long day. I'm wearing a hat. I'm definitely just, I don't know if you can even tell if you're watching this, I probably look exhausted. It's just been a lot. It's the start of August now. And I feel like there's just so much happening. And I'm like trying to get my ducks in a row. But this podcast is very much like a healing space for me. And I love doing it. I love making it a priority. So I appreciate you being here and I am excited to tackle this episode. I feel like when life gets really busy and like there's so many obligations that come our way, whether it's like work or it's like these social commitments, whatever it is, I think it's so important to really take some time to yourself and make sure you're also healing parts of yourself no matter what that is. So for me, a lot of times, like I actually look forward to sitting down and just doing a recording. It's not even work to me. I feel like it's just I'm sitting here, I'm chatting. I love hearing any feedback I get on podcast episodes. And it also helps me reflect on a lot of things I went through when I was younger, especially as I was navigating my sexuality and things I had to unlearn, the compulsory heterosexuality I dealt with. So I don't know. I love doing it and I appreciate every single one of you who tune in. Thank you so much. The The community that has been built through this podcast truly warms my heart so, so much. And I talk to Sarah about this all the time, my old co-host. I always tell her, I cannot believe we did this. Like, you know, we did this thing as a passion project and we have genuinely made friends out of this podcast. And um, one of my goals is to really be like very engaged on the Instagram page and ask you all just more questions about queerness, even your experiences. Or I posted a story, uh, it would have been last week, just to asking people about what their favorite queer movies are. And the response I got was awesome. I actually even learned about some new movies and series that I didn't know were queer. So I will definitely be checking those out. I just wanted to say thank you for being here. I really appreciate the listeners who tune in every week. And yeah, I'll I'll never get over it. I'm I'm so grateful for this community always. So for this episode, sorry, I just want to pan over to my little guy over here real quick. Besso, gotta say hi. <laughs> He's so cute. So for this podcast episode specifically, I wanted to talk about the power of manifestation and how I believe I manifested my partner, Crystal. And I truly believe I did. And I'm going to tell the story on this podcast because I've always believed in manifestation. I am a huge believer in the energy you put out into the world is what you will receive back. And words are very powerful. Things you say, things you write down when you're very intentional with things and you meditate on it, I think the universe listens to you and it will deliver what you're kind of asking for. So, for example, I think in many ways, if I was going through a really hard time and feeling very negative, 
you know, maybe work was very stressful, just life in general was very stressful, finances, relationships, all of that. When I was going through a really hard time, I feel like I was unintentionally putting out this like negative energy in the air. And it's not that I was trying to do that. I think most of the time when that's happening, we don't even know we're doing it and we can't control it. In a lot of my 20s, when I was discovering my sexuality and, you know, finally realizing I'm a lesbian and I was so excited about that, I was definitely much more intentional with the people I wanted to see, the people I started dating. But I could also still see parts of me that were settling for less than I deserved. And I did that quite a bit from like 25 up until I met my girlfriend at 27. So like two years of kind of, you know, still being open, still giving things a chance, but deep down knowing that I don't really want this. You know what I mean? Or not that I didn't want, like, I liked the person. So I was obviously going off of feeling, but our values just weren't really aligning or things they wanted weren't really lining up with what I wanted. But I still found myself kind of settling in those situations, you know? And I feel like when I was doing that and I was kind of letting things slide, I wasn't being so intentional about what I wanted. I was almost telling the universe, I'm okay with this. Like a good example is I found myself in a little bit of a friends with benefits situation and I kind of found myself later on thinking, I don't really want this. Like I actually want a relationship in my life at some point. And I think if I am settling for things I don't really want, like what does that really say? You know, like what kind of message am I putting out there to the universe, really? Because I kind of found myself in these patterns of attracting people in my life who weren't looking for a relationship. It could have just been the timing of things. It could have been really they, they're just not relationship people. They just kind of like want to have fun and they're not looking for commitment. And all of that is totally fine. I respect it. But I'm a relationship girl at the end of the day. I really wanted to build a relationship with a woman and I wanted to meet someone who wanted the same things as me. But the way I was portraying myself or how I was like, I'm I'm chill, I'm casual, it doesn't matter. Like I'm just I'm just excited to like get to know people. Deep down I was like I was feeling a little bit empty kind of because I knew deep down I wanted more. And I always wanted more. So there was a time, and I want to say it was the summer of 2022, where I was like, I know what I want, and I'm going to get so intentional about what I want. So maybe this was actually more fall of 2022. Yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, it was like summer had happened. I was doing my thing. But once the fall of 2022 hit, I almost felt like a different person. It was a different person than I had been the last year, the year before that. And what I mean by that is I was a lot more intentional about what I wanted and so much more firm in being like, I'm not going to settle for anything at this point. That's not going to be a relationship because that's what I want. And it's not to say I wanted any relationship. I wanted it to be with someone where I was very excited about them. I felt things because I was going on some dates with people where something just wasn't something just wasn't clicking for me with them and they I went on a date with someone who fully did want a relationship but I was like something's just missing for me there and I can't fake it I'm someone who's like when I know I know and that used to always bug me in the past because I was like I keep saying when I know I know but why am I into the people who like don't want relationships and the people who want relationships, I'm like not feeling it. And I told my therapist about that. And I remember she was saying, are there parts of you that you feel like are emotionally unavailable? And I thought maybe in ways, but also I can't really explain it. Like I just get a feeling if I like somebody. It's it's usually not one of those things for me where it like grows naturally over time. Like I know like really quickly. So yeah, fast forward to fall 2022. I'm actually just like 
very happy like being alone because I was going on a lot of dates like prior to that and was just not feeling fulfilled. If anything, I'm like, I'm going to stop chasing. I'm genuinely going to stop chasing. I'm just going to sit and be comfortable in being single and also being so comfortable being a lesbian. Because mind you, at that point, I'd come out, I guess it would have been like a couple years before, I would have been turning 27 in September of 2022. And I really only came out as as a lesbian at 25 years old. So yes, that's like almost two years of being like fully out as a lesbian. So I was still coming to terms with, you know, that comfortability and being like, yes, this is what I want. I know I want to be with a woman and it feels so free. I love it. I love it so much. So I am like there. Just picture it. I'm like very comfortable. I'm finally like, you know what? I don't even really want to go on too many dates. I'm just like happy being being with myself and learning more about what I want. And if the right person comes along, they will 100%. I remember I held a birthday party for my friend Ali Patel. Shout out to Ali Patel. Ali's been on the podcast a couple of times. I held a party for them at my apartment in Toronto. And the end of the night like approaches and Ali and I are just having some deep chats just about life, love, the universe, <laughs> literally. And Ali just said to me, I don't remember what it was verbatim, but Ali asked me if I'd ever written like a manifestation list. And I told Ali, yeah, I have before, but I wonder how intentional I was with them before. Like I would definitely write things down, but I don't know if I properly like meditated on it or maybe internally I wasn't like really putting that energy out there. I think I was like still discovering so much about myself that maybe there were parts of me that weren't sure yet. I don't know. Maybe that's what it was. I feel like there was a lot of things I still needed to work on on myself. So I told Allie that and Allie said, we're going to work on a manifestation list for you like tonight, like literally right now. And oh my God, at this point, it's probably like three in the morning. Like who knows what time it is at this point. It's so late where Ali, like Ali, before they were about to go home, we're just chilling. Like the friends are still there. Ali's like, we're going to write this list for you now. And we're going to manifest you a partner, like a really, really good partner. And I kid you not, I still have this list, but I'm so sad because Crystal and I did a big clean out of, um, the apartment and we cleared out this like this big ladder shelf we had which I think the list was on and I'm like oh my god where is this list if I find it I'm going to pop back in the podcast and read it out to you but I do remember vaguely what it said so Ali and I write all the qualities I'm looking for in a partner and I wrote down things like a woman who actually loves women monogamous at that point in my life and still to this point now, I'm a monogamous person and I really wanted to look for someone who is also monogamous. Um, I'm pretty sure I wrote, is a good cook, <laughs> loves to travel, loves adventure, loves music, is close with their family, is dominant. I think I wrote that like a, or assertive, something like that. I also wrote, and this is a funny story when I look back at it, I wrote golden retriever energy. But later, I was telling my cousin Gabe about this manifestation list I wrote. And I read it to him. And Gabe was like, Persis, I don't think you want golden retriever energy. You yourself are a golden retriever. I feel like you're going to want like Doberman energy. <laughs> and when I thought about that, I was like, wait a minute. I think that's so true because I'm such a golden retriever. I'm very like bubbly, social very like a friends oriented person, which is so fun. And I love those qualities in people. But I've noticed like I get very attracted to someone who's a little bit more on like the firm side, a little bit more. Um, I don't know how to describe it other than like Doberman, like picture a Doberman, you guys like it's not someone who's like scary or anything like that. But I'm like attracted to like the mystery, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I did a horrible job of explaining it. But I literally went back to my list, crossed out golden retriever energy, and wrote down Doberman energy. 
Gabe and I had a good laugh about that because I was like, you're right. I feel like my golden retriever needs to meet like a, a Doberman. <laughs> so Allie and I had written that list. I think the date was October 23rd, 2022. Fast forward to October 27th, 2022, when Fletcher was having a show in Toronto. I go with my friend Teen, and that is where I meet Crystal. And Crystal and I actually started dating in February of 2023, but we met in 2022 and we became friends, which then eventually turned into a relationship the next year. And early into our relationship, I was telling Crystal about this manifestation list because it was still like very present in my apartment at that point. I'm pretty sure I left it on my nightstand or something. And I showed Crystal this list. And as I was reading it out to her, I was like, this is you. Like, this to a T is you. Like everything I wrote down, there was not one thing that was off. And what's so funny is if I didn't cross out golden retriever, I would have been like, Crystal's not a gold golden retriever. And I know people say like, it's either golden retriever or black cat, but maybe she would be like a black cat. But the Doberman specifically is literally what Crystal is. <laughs> and it's like so funny because I'm like, she's kind of like a Doberman. And I was kind of like geeking out at that point because I felt like that was an example of manifestations truly just coming true. And I don't know if it's a coincidence, but the timing of everything and just me feeling so ready for a relationship and a real commitment and manifesting a partner who who compliments me and we learn off of each other, I think was just like such a blessing. And Crystal and I will get into this more about the way we started dating and how our relationship like kicked off and how we fell in love and everything. We will talk about that when Crystal's on the podcast because there's just there's so much I can't even just cover on my own. Like I really want to have Crystal's perspective too so we can just have like a sweet and open chat about it. But I was like, okay, this cannot just be a coincidence. This feels like I manifested a partner, like I manifested my girlfriend. I really believe that. And this time when I manifested, it felt different than the other times I had when I would write stuff down because Ali even told me, get specific. Like you should get very specific. And there were also actually also things I wrote down that I that I wanted from a partner in the ways like how they would treat me. And it was like, this person will treat you with respect. Like they will, they will love you. They'll care for you. And those sound really generic, but it's like those feelings of someone just like really caring about you and wanting you to succeed, wanting you to grow. Like they're not in competition with you. They're like, I am rooting for you and I want to see you do well. Like I, I want that for you. It's almost like, um, your best friend, but they're also your lover and you're just so happy to see them succeed. I feel that way about Crystal. I'm always just like rooting for her and I want her to have all the good things in life. She truly deserves it because she is one of the most selfless people I've ever met. And I've learned a lot through her in our relationship and us being together for a year and a half. I have learned so much and I've grown so much in that relationship. I've grown in ways I didn't think were possible and like to grow that fast. You know what I mean? But when you spend so much time with someone too and the way our relationship progressed, it it just naturally happened. And I'm so grateful for that. But I wrote all of these things down and I was like, this is you. And I'm not even like trying to make it you. It's literally you. And we had a good laugh about it because she was like, oh my God, I guess you did like that. Because I met her a few days after I wrote that list. And we met in a way where it's like, I didn't expect it. I did not expect that when I was at that Fletcher concert, meeting her for the first time in a group of other people, would I have ever expected that person was going to be my girlfriend a few months later? You just, you just never know. And back to my point about when things just have to be like very natural for me and it kind of has to be like an instant like, yes, I like you. The moment Crystal and I got to that point, it was no questions asked. I knew I really liked her. 
I knew I wanted to be with her. It was no hesitation on my end. And that's when I knew I want to be with this girl. I'm, I, I love this girl, you know, and it happened like, uh, it was like serendipitous, <laughs> which is the way I like to look at it. So I guess to my point, I feel like the energy you put out there and if you're being very honest about it is so important and really tell the universe what you want. Trust in the universe and, and they will listen to you or it will listen to you. The universe will listen to you. And it's not to say you're not going to have bad days where you're like, I don't know, you're feeling really down in the dumps. You're feeling frustrated at times because I have had many moments in my life where I've been so exhausted. I felt frustrated. I, I'm i pretty sure even that Christmas of 2022, so Crystal and I weren't dating at all. I had I'd met Crystal, but I remember December 2022, I cried to my mom because I was like, it's a struggle out there with dating. I'm feeling very lonely. The lesbian pool or the queer pool seems really, really small and it's tough. There are many times in queer dating where you can feel very isolated because it's not as easy to know who's queer and who's not if you're not really active on apps because I also at one point like deleted dating apps because I just wasn't loving them. I, I just really wanted to meet someone organically, but that can be really tough sometimes in a world that's so heterosexual, unless you're intentionally like going to all these queer events in your day to day. It's really, really tough. So yeah, I remember being really upset and telling my mom about it. And she told me it'll happen in the right time. It will. And you're not going to force it. It's just going to feel very, very natural. And you know what? When you hear those things, I get it can be annoying. Like it can be because you you almost want like the answers right away. But I really listened to my mom and I, I took a deep breath and I was like, you're right. I think I'm just going through it. I'm feeling a little lonely. I'm feeling things I want or the people where like I thought I wanted it to work out. It just wasn't. And it was very, very frustrating for me. But when things happen with Crystal... It was so exciting. Like, and we'll go back to like all the beginning feelings and just like how meant to be it really felt because none of us were forcing anything. It was almost like two souls are meeting who like knew each other before because it's like that familiarity. And I'm really not trying to sound cheesy right now. <laughs> I'm really not, but that's how I feel. It was that kind of connection. And I told Crystal when I met her the first night at the Fletcher concert, I like felt like I knew her before. There was this comfort of being like, I don't know what it is. Like, why do I feel like I know you? Have I seen you before? There's something that's familiar to me. So for us to get together and for us to build such a strong relationship after is beautiful. And it's the other thing with the manifestation list, I guess I should point this out, is, and I'm pretty sure Allie told me this and gave me this advice. I think when Allie said, when you write a manifestation list, you can't think about it. You kind of have to write it down and put it away. Like, genuinely, put it away. Don't be fussing over it. Don't be thinking about it. You can't be going about your life almost like looking for people. You just have to sit with it. And after I did put the list away, or I guess I put it in my nightstand, <laughs> I did forget about it because I was like, I'm putting this energy out there. This is what I want. I'm being so certain. And when the right person comes along, they will. And that's that's what happened. I I feel like Crystal just came into my life and it came, it happened in a way that was like, we were at the right place at the right time you know, and that's a beautiful thing. I can't wait to have Crystal on the podcast. That's probably going to happen sooner than later because we actually have some more stuff we want to talk about together and let you guys know what's going on. But yeah, when she's on, we will talk more about this. And I'd love for you to hear her perspective too about how she perceived our first meeting and also the manifestation list. I, I truly did look 
all over the apartment for it because I'm like, where is this list? I promise if I find it, I'm going to read it exactly how I had it verbatim. But I would encourage you, for anyone who's out there who's curious about manifestation or where to even start, it it starts, it genuinely starts with like what you're putting out into the world. So if you want to start, I would write things down. Write it down and really mean what you write. I think that's the biggest thing is you need to be like ready for it and very honest about it. And you'll be surprised about what can come out of it. And reach for the stars, right? Write anything that you absolutely believe can happen for you. Because you know what? Anything can happen for you. You can build your life. I feel like there's so many books and podcasts about these topics where people are like, I manifested my dream life. I manifested my dream job, my dream partner, my dream friend group. I just think we have so much power that we don't always utilize because we let life get in the way. We we get stressed. There are so many things that kind of take up our time. But what I would start doing is maybe journal every so often and really practice putting good energy out. And I'm not trying to say this in a toxic positivity kind of way. I think when you're feeling things and you're going through it, make sure you feel those feels and let it out in whatever way it can be and even write those feelings down. But when you're trying to manifest what you want for yourself, look at the positive things. And I think beautiful things can happen to each and every one of you. I believe that is how I manifested my Doberman girlfriend. (laughs) When you guys get to know Crystal, because you will, she's a very firm person. She's assertive. And I admire that quality in her so much because my little golden retriever persona is very not the most assertive person. And I am trying to work on that um, in ways. So I think it's a good match because I, I feel like I bring out sides of her that she really loves and wants to work on and then vice versa. So yeah, I truly believe I manifested it and I did it when I was also ready for a relationship. And yeah, I, I just wanted to talk about that on the podcast. I I feel like there's a lot of power behind manifestation and I'm going to try to utilize it more for other aspects of my life, even when it comes to finances, with traveling, with purchasing property, like the the options are endless in that case. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys are manifesting some good things out there. Even like when you're listening to good podcasts, good music, like all of it's like energy. That's another point is like the food you eat, like the the movies you consume, everything is energy, right? So really be mindful of that kind of stuff and and see see how your life can really turn out when we're being so intentional by inviting good things into our life. So I would encourage you all to do that. I think I want to get into the habit of journaling more. I used to do it a little bit around COVID and then I stopped, but I want to because I think it's so beautiful to journal and then look back and see what you actually manifested for yourself or even just this, even just the things you were going through at one point and then how far you've come. So that's my little spiel on manifestation. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Um, once again, I drop episodes every single Monday. Please let me know if there's anything you're curious about, if there's any topics you want me to cover specifically on queerness or sexual health, women loving women relationships, sex, any of that. Please let me know in the DMs and I will make sure to cover those topics. I hope you're having a really, really good day and have a great rest of your week and I will see you next Monday.